time for England to answer the Pied Piper. The knockout stages are here and we're here to give you a little preview and prediction for England versus Slovakia. Just come off of a stinker against Slovenia. Three stinkers. Where are they, Slovakia and Slovenia? Are they near each other in the world? I'm not no geographer. But they like sound, Central Europe? They sound like they might be. We've gone from, um, so yeah, a nil-nil nil stinker playing. against Slovenia to Slovakia now. We are playing basically a carbon copy of what we played in the group stages. But we can't afford to be as fucking horseshit as we have been because draws won't cut the mustard anymore. No. We don't want to be getting taken to penalties because penalties at this stage are just a lottery. We've seen big teams go out uh, against smaller nations. Yeah. Not to be rude, but um, in previous tournaments, we've seen that happen loads and loads and loads. And we just can't do it. We have to do it within the 90. And we have to start strong. We do. How do we start strong? Well, check out our video that came out a couple of days ago where we kind of review England's group stage as a whole and in more depth the Slovenia game and what went wrong there. If you want to get our kind of insight on what we think went wrong and a few tweaks on what we might change to make it better. But in this video, we're going to talk about this game in isolation, what um, Slovakia will do differently to any of the teams we've played in the group stages and what we might need to do to get through what is 100% the best side of the draw. Yeah, I mean, the draw has blessed us. We were lucky that France, I think, finished... Second. Second, so yeah. that they weren't on our side of the draw. Uh, Romania topping them, uh, their group really helped as well. Yeah. Um, and obviously Georgia beating Portugal meant that we played Slovakia instead of a slightly more frightening prospect in the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, and we have to take this chance. We have to. I think we've been blessed through our... The, the, in the previous Euros with a fairly easy run to the final. Similar with the World Cup as well, where we had quite a nice group. And then um, up until we played France, it was pretty easy. Yep. Uh, and then obviously even the... Uh, was it Qatar? World? No. Russia World Cup where we played... All the way up to Croatia, yeah. Yeah, we went out to Croatia. And we only played Germany in the round of 16. But mm. a poor German side. So we have to really grasp for this opportunity with both hands. and um, But but a good performance against Slovakia is, is is necessary. Not just getting past them. We need a good performance now to start building that momentum. Especially because start- right now, the England media toxicity is an all-time high. Yeah, 100%. It's real bad. Um, and this is a good opportunity. It's a really good opportunity because yeah. we can we can more easily analyze what we did against the teams in our group who play similarly to Slovakia who would mm. be who'd, it'd be much more different if we were playing against the Netherlands yeah so we can take our lessons and and sort of see what we've learned and I think this is the ideal game to do it I think they're probably on par with the likes of uh, Slovenia yeah in terms of where I'd rank them um, even so I'd say in theory like going into tournament I would have rated them a little bit less than Serbia yeah, so, like, less dangerous. Yeah, 100%. so it's interesting that... Well, they finished third in their group, but their whole group was 4.4.4.4 4. 4. 4. Yeah. 4 points. And let's talk about Slovakia and then we'll talk about England. Slovakia are an interesting... They've got like a few good players, but no star players. So like you said, pretty much like the teams in our group that we've already played. Yeah, I mean, the star players, we're looking at Skriniar, uh, Lobotka. Lobotka's had a really good tournament yeah, so far. Yeah, Lobotka's been fantastic. Yeah, uh, And maybe Duda as well. What I think could be a problem for England if they te- they play exactly the same as they have been throughout the group stages is we saw in that Slovenia game, Slovenia, who I think are absolutely pants, in that first half, we made them look like one of the best teams in the world. The way they were passing it around, dictating the tempo, our press was so disjointed, we just couldn't get near them. And they haven't really got like an exciting midfield. Whereas Slovakia, with Lobotka in there, he can dictate the game quite yeah. well. And so if England allow him and that midfield that time, we could be in trouble. Yeah, 100%. I think going forward, they're less dangerous than yeah. probably all the teams we face in the group stages, but which even, is beneficial. That's not a problem for us. We've conceded the least XG at the tournament so far. And we've, so built, like, we've built all of our tournament successes so far. On being of- sturdy at the back. So I have no fear about kind of teams coming at us. My fear is that we are just really bad, bad at coming at teams. Especially teams who are going to sit deep. And I yeah. think that's what the game plan will be from Slovakia. They'll they'll want to see out the first half, get in at half-time at 0-0, don't let the game get away from them. Yeah. And then 
we know as as that clock starts ticking down, we start approaching the ninety. If it's nil nil, England th- their heads are going straight to thinking, right, this could go penalties. This could go pants. Yeah, go, yeah, and at that point, it's anyone's guess. Um, but yeah, I, I think one of the main areas to target is they've got a thirty-seven year old right back. But we have a problematic situation on the left hand side. We and saw we spoke ad nauseum about what we can do. Is it move Saka there? Is it play um, Anthony Gordon there? I don't think Foden's going to be around for this game. Oh, is he not? Or is he back? But he wouldn't have trained, so people he think he'll be dropped. Today, but I, I think he was maybe our best performer in the game versus Slovenia. Slovenia yeah, he, he's the only one making things happen for himself. Yeah, um, and I think looking at it. Jude, when he was left to his own devices and he sort of had to drift out to the left-hand side, his phone came centrally, he was really poor. He was just not in the position at all. He was walking around. It was lackadaisical. It was lazy. It was no pressure on his side. Yeah. He, he, he looked like he had thrown a tantrum. And I think as well, like there was a point where Palmer cuts the ball back onto the penalty spot, which is exactly where Jude should have been. But he was just walking around, like holding the touchline. Yeah. No reason at all. Also, um, Jude isn't the kind of guy that you'd want going up against a 37 year old. He's not like got blistering he's pace. He's not dynamic. He's not going to beat you one on one. No. Whereas but- like someone like Anthony Gordon or even Foden out there, it, you want someone that can pick up the ball and drive at a player. Eze. Eze. I, think- I, I don't think we'll see him at all this tournament. What, oh, we saw about that like a couple of minutes. Do you think? No, I, I think, think if anyone is going to play, it'll be Anthony Gordon. I think that there's no one better in the team than Eze at beating a man. Mm. He, he, we've seen, we saw it in the the build up games. His ability to take two people, which is out of the game with yeah. one move, is fantastic. But I, I hundred percent agree with what you said, Anthony Gordon. I think his cameo against Slovenia was really prom- promising. I think it gave Gareth Southgate a lot of uh, questions to answer. Shame that he fell off his bike and hurt his chin. Yeah, but now he looks rough and ready. <laughs> Come on. He looks like he's actually put in a shift. He looks so um, funny. But the, the only positive I took out of the Slovenia game was that last sort of, four, even the last 45, we were so much better yeah. than we had been for the previous 45 and the previous 90 before that. I've had my take on that. I think we were better, but it, but it was hard not to be better. We were so poor. Yeah, I completely agree. But I, I think what is positive for me and makes me believe that we might make changes is mm. that we were so, so much better. That, that is it, hard it, to ignore, yeah. Yeah, I think Mainu is a shoe in Mainu I, was really good. Trent and Gallagher in midfield, not happening ever again. Mm. Unless we're seeing out a game, maybe he brings Gallagher on. Yeah. Um, I think Carl Walker at left back is fine. I'd much prefer Carl Walker as that left back to allow Trent in at the right back. Well, there's even talks Luke Shaw might be fit. Yeah, I don't think you could throw him in from the start. I Although this you... isn't a terrible game to throw him in at the start, because is it arguably worse that if we then go on a bit further, play a good team, and then you drop him in? Well, I, I think the the ideal scenario for me is that you start with Walker at the left-back position, mm. bring Trent into the right-hand side. I think immediately it gives you more attacking threat just across the pitch. Yeah, Trent he's needs gonna, to be he, in he's around. He's going to play yeah. the balls forward. He's going to overlap. It, it just gives you so much more. He's going to look for the switch. If you play Anthony Gordon on the left-hand side as well, I think that's he, he does the defensive work as well, mm. which will help um, Carl Walker. I think he's going to get at his man. Yeah. And I think you drop Jude. If Foden's available, I think you drop Jude. I think Mainu and Rice feeding uh, Foden in the middle and let Kane just do his thing. Where do you stand on the Saka versus Palmer debate? Saka has to start. I think Saka's done nothing like badly enough that he gets dropped. And Palmer wasn't he, he, so he, good he that he starts. He delivered for like our first, first goal, goal of the tournament. Yeah, yeah. He was involved in the second goal of the tournament. Yeah. And he's also been involved in like two of our best chances. Yeah, 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 100%. So for me, he has to play. I think, especially if you're playing Trent on the right-hand side, I'm not so sure about Cole Palmer's defensive work, yeah. tracking back. We know what Saka's about. Don't like the shouts for Saka at left back, though. I think that's a bit wily. I think yeah. the, the, the ideal scenario is that we go into this game, line up how I said, and then we go 1 0 up, sort of like middle of the first half. The second half, you can start maybe looking at bringing Luke Shaw in, getting 45 minutes under his belt or, or like 30 minutes. Yeah, I like and that. then then you maybe can start him the next game. Mm. Because the work, I think the thing you don't want to do is start Shaw and then it's nil-nil at like 60 minutes and you have no attacking threat to bring on. Yeah. 
at least Shaw is going to give something. Yeah, that's true. You know, give them a problem to think about. If you have Shaw and Gordon on that left hand side at like 70th minute, their 37 year old right back is going to be shitting Cooked, himself. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I think that's the ideal scenario. Um, but like you said, they've got Lebocca in the middle of the pitch who I, could, who th- I think could offer something for them. But I'm not worried about them, really. No, in theory, I'm not worried about them. But I will hark back to the group stages. We played Serbia and then we were like, oh, it wasn't a great performance, but we got the result. We'll we'll kick up a notch against Denmark. Stunk it up against Denmark. 1-1. 0-0? 1-1? Uh, yeah. 0-0. And then... 1-1. No, 1-1. Yeah. And then we were like, oh, Denmark are an all right side. We'll end the group against Slovakia. It'd be easy. Blah, blah, blah. No, Slovenia. And... um stunk that one up yeah I mean so there's not a good track record of learning from mistakes and getting better as time yeah but the group games happen in such close proximity like I already saw things in the second half of that of the last game that I could tell were fixes for what hadn't worked before Mm -hmm. and for me uh, Slovakia do not have the quality in the middle of the pitch or going forward that Denmark and Slovenia uh, Denmark and Serbia offer and defensively they're nowhere near as good as Denmark um, but th- this is the question if they're going to sit back and, and sit deep and look to sort of long the game out yeah. and try and get to that 90 minutes get through the extra time take its penalties then it could be a really long night but for us that might work that might work as long as we're brave as long as we sit we don't sit deep yeah we need to bring the game to them I'll hit you with some stats highest XG conceded they're in fourth place with 4.4 XG conceded so they concede chances they've only really got through their group based on the fact that they beat Belgium yeah and their group was just weird yeah but yeah they concede chances but on the other side you've got England who lowest XG conceded which is really good uh, 1.1 they're actually clear by quite a uh, a way but lowest XG created as well 2.2 so we're up against a team that concede a lot of chances but we're not creating a lot of chances no so we need to sort out our chance creation if we line up with the same lineup that started against um slovenia mm. i'm gonna lose my shit so what's that that's conor gallagher again in the middle gallagher and trippier left yeah with and Jude Foden on the and Foden, yeah I, I, the, the issue is does Gareth have enough balls about him no. to make these big calls that is and I, that's I, not even a that's just a no I think 100%. this might be the turning point I really do <laughs> well, he's like just, lost his just by reading into what he's been saying yeah. he came out today and said I'm the problem, problem yeah, yeah. and I was like big man at, you are but. at least no but at least he's not been ignorant no he's, no, he's yeah. accepting that there is criticism yeah and he knows that there's there's a fair reason for it. He should he doesn't deserve to get fucking beer thrown at him. And he shit does like that. not. No, it's well out of order. But I think something might maybe click in here. He there is no way that after three games he can look at that left hand side and continue how it is. It but cannot he did it against can, yeah, Slovenia. But it cannot happen now. It cannot. And I really think that he he won't let it. I, I, I think he may be too scared to drop Trippier because our defence has been so good. Mm. And I think he may be too scared to play Trent because our defence has been so good, which is fine. I can I can probably deal with that. There is no way that Gallagher is going to start. I, I, I just cannot see it in my crystal ball at all. The main question is, is that if Gallagher doesn't start, is he going to drop Jude in there because he's too scared to drop Jude entirely? Entirely, yeah. Or... Is he going to play Minu and drop one and of Jude and drop Foden? one of Jude and, and Foden? That Which is I, the debate. I, I like I it. I think it has to be drop one of Jude or Foden, Foden yeah. because at the end of the day, at least at that point, if it's not working, you have the option. You can take Minu off, drop Jude in, yeah. put Foden in the ten. But that is arguably of the two decisions. That is the braver one. What to drop one of them? What, drop one of Jude or Foden because they're bigger stars than dropping a. Uh, a Gallagher and Minu and put one of them deeper. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I don't really know, but I think that's one of the things that has to happen. I think Jude or Foden have to be dropped, or Jude has to be dropped into the eight. That is that is be all end of all. If I think we mate, have to have Jude has to be dropped. We have to have Gordon on the left hand side. Mm. We have to make the most of that. And I, I think I'm maybe being quite disrespectful about their right back, 
Yeah, but, maybe. But, but at it's the same an area time, we have to target. We haven't offered anything left hand side. Anthony whole... Gordon is one of the most exciting left wingers in football at the moment. He's and so he's direct. just not getting his flowers, and and that's because he's not playing. No, exactly. And I think in his cameos, he's been the best player on the pitch. Mm. Um, so for me, Anthony Gordon has to start. We haven't even we haven't won a penalty this whole tournament, which is what we were doing well, every other tournament. Created fuck all, but we had though. like four touches in the box. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Anthony Gordon immediately just his presence on the pitch is going to step you up five yards. Yeah, just the fact that he's there because they can't afford to leave that space because he will take it, and that gives Harry Kane someone to bloody try and ping a pass to because at the moment he's got Phil Foden coming in and occupying his space he's got Jude um, occupying his space and then Harry Kane's just like oh I've got no one to pass to apart from Saka at least having Anthony Gordon there gives him another out ball 100% agree 100% agree right so in terms of predictions what are we thinking my head says nil nil and then England <laughs> go out on penalties I've throughout the group stage got more and more optimistic with my predictions and being I think I said five no <laughs> yeah and being pied in the face every single time so I'm not going to be as optimistic but I'll let you go first I'm going to go 1-0 England yeah I'm going to go 1-0 England yeah <laughs> Who, who's, uh, who's, who's doing it for you Saki Saki boy I'm yeah. going to say oh, I, w- I want to say Foden but I'm I just not sure he's going to play I'm going to say Declan Rice yeah but the fact that both of us are predicting 1-0 kind of shows the mindset that we're in right now. Hopefully England surprised us. Do you know what? I am positive. Let us know in the comments down below. You're starting 11 because we're intrigued about what tweaks you'd make and then your score prediction. Stinky football teams win with stinky football and that is that is the pattern of the Euros. I've seen people say that if England go on and win this tournament, it's like uh, Gre- uh, Greece winning the Euros back in 2004. That's how bad we've been. I mean, Portugal weren't much better when they won it. Facts. So maybe that's how you win the Euros. That's what I, I think it is. Unless you're Spain. Yeah. Unless you're Spain. Yeah, let us know your score prediction down below. Will Gareth make the big changes needed? Who knows? If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, and follow us on all our socials. We are pumping content out like it's nobody's business. Check Euros, out TikTok. Even once the Euros is over, we're heading straight into Premier League season. It's going to be fantastic and we can't wait. And the content never stops. You'll never be bored. It's ball draw. Come on, England. <laughs>